Alright, welcome back to another SFM tutorial. Um, this time I wanted to teach you how to light up your posters and your animations as well. This can also apply to animations. Um, this tutorial will actually be quite straightforward, quite uh, fast as well. I will not go too much into detail. What I will teach you in this tutorial can also apply to other uh, animation software or just CGI. Uh, programs broadly speaking because what I'm going to insist on is character lighting um, so let's get right into it first of all remember that whenever you're not working with the lighting it must always be disabled because it will save performance uh, what I mean by that is that you can right click the viewport and you can see that lighting is disabled uh, since we are actually going to work with the lighting let's re-enable it and as you can see lighting just starts working. This is ambient lighting. I haven't touched anything yet. Uh, there are some programs that can actually get rid of um, ambient lighting, map lighting, I mean, because lights casted by uh, props on the map cannot be edited directly into SFM. You have to use third-party tools for that. Either hammer or uh, light deleters. Anyway, that's not the point of this, this tutorial. First of all, I'm going to teach you what we call three-point lighting. I'm going to light up the character in the center right here. This technique, three-point lighting, is used in many, well, in pretty much every uh, CGI software you, you, you can actually think of. I even believe it can op also apply to the digital or even traditional art, depending on how much detail you want to put into, into your creations. So. Three-point three lighting, as, it, as its name suggests, uh, consists of three lights. So let's just create three lights right now. We're going to take care of them later. Remember that you can also disable lights right here. This will simply make them invisible, so when you want to work with the lights and not get bothered by the others, just click that. And the first light is called the key light, which I like to call myself the main light. But I'm going to call it the key light because that's the, so to speak, the official name. So as you can see, you can uh, left click the light, drag it onto the viewport and release it so that you can control the light like a camera. Uh, always have two viewports when you're working with the lighting and also when you're just posing or using SFM broadly speaking. So for this light, the key light is pretty much as, it as its name suggests, the light that um, that's going to light up our character the most. People we say, oh, this is where the, lights co the light comes from. And when, when they say that, they usually refer to the, to the key light. We don't ha need to have it so intense right now. Let's just lower, lower the intensity for now. That's still a little bit too much. I think that's good. Yep, so as you can see, I'm posing it next to the character, as you can tell. It's like someone that's, uh, if, if you wish, standing next to the character and just uh, looking at them. So, this is a shadowed light. So I would recommend you to play with these sliders here. Shadow Atten and Shadow Filter Size. I will put Shadow Atten to the minimum because that's usually what I do. And Shadow Filter Size is a quite weird, um, quite weird setting, you could say. I don't really know what it does, but it pretty much defines the amount of detail in the shadow. Let me let me tell you what I mean. See what it looks like right now, and if I lower the value, you can see that the shadows are looking much sharper. You can uh, clearly tell them apart. Uh, do not put it to, a, to the minimum, because you're going to get some very funky results, as you can see. I usually put 0.03, that's the value I always put, usually. But uh, you can also put some other values if you wish, it just depends on, on your style. But in my case, I just put 0.03. Also, I wanted to say the, the lighting techniques that I'm going to show you in this tutorial are mine. But you can pretty much, you know, adapt and find your own, find your own ones. Because I think the, the, the techniques that, I'm, that I show you, I, that I'm going to show you, sorry, are pretty much, you know, universal. I mean, three-point lighting is, is universal on its own. And the shadow attenuation, as you can tell, well, uh, changes the... Uh, the Attenuation of the shadow. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> anyway, um, then there's this slider that, that, that I use, far Z attenuation. I always put it to the maximum, or not always, but often. 
basically it defines how far the light will go. Will go. Then one last thing I like to do about the key light, actually two last things. First of all, uh, right click the key light and click on enable volumetrics. This will make what we call a volumetric light. It's not very visible right now, but if I turn this slider way up, you can see that it makes some some sort of uh, light that's, uh, that's some kind of fog, if you wish. Well, that's literally what we call a volumetric light. Volumetric. Uh, let's not leave it at this intensity. Let's maybe leave it at this. Yeah, this looks cool. There's also noise strength that you can play with. The last thing I would like to do is actually picking some colors for our character, for this light. I'm going to pick some rather uh, hot colors, warm colors. So for that, I'm going to turn these sliders down and play with play with the sliders until I get a, a color that looks like a, like I want. This can take some time. This looks good. I think our our key light is ready now. As you can tell, there's some shadows here that kind of bother me, like right here, and also right here, broadly speaking. What I might do later is just disable either either, either turn this slider down, or simply disable uh, shadows. I will take care of that later. The second light I would like to show you, uh, remember to always lower the intensity because by default SFM likes to make <laughs> lights that completely destroy your eyes. The second light is called the fill light. I like to call it the contrast breaker, and I'm gonna show you why. Although contrast breaker doesn't mean anything, but I'm just gonna show you right now. Uh, this light, the fill light, pretty much uh, corresponds to the other light, the the main light that I showed you earlier, the key light. Because as you can tell, I'm placing I'm placing it almost at the same place, uh, almost in the same way, sorry, as the 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 previous light. It's just the... it's just standing at the other side. See, th this takes some time, but once I get the result that I want, I can release the light. I think this looks good. So the point of this light... Let's put it like so. You can, you can, you can actually see it quite properly here. Let me first of all adjust the colors, and I will explain what it, what it does. This looks good. So... Without the field light, this is what the character would look like. And you see, this is why I call it the contrast breaker. When you when you use a field light, you sort of break the contrast that was created by the, the key light that you put earlier. Well, it prevents the character from having literally two sides visually, because as you can tell, this side is bright, but this side is dark. And that's the point of the field light. Breaks the contrast. But of course, depending on the context, you may sometimes uh, not need a field light. It just depends on, on how you want to, to light up your posters. That's how I do it, but of course you you have to, to uh, find your own your own uh, method, your own style. Yeah, this looks good. I'm just going to lower the intensity. Uh, the field light should theoretically uh, be less bright than the key light. Otherwise, there will be like two key lights or the fill light would act as a key light and the key light would act as a uh, fill light which would not look very good. Also as you can tell the fill light is the far furthest from the camera and the key light is the closest from the camera. That's also important to, to notice. And then we can also enable volumetrics for this one. Although it's not necessary but I, I, I always like having some volumetrics on my lights. Once again let's lower this to 0.03. This looks good. Shadow attenuation goes down. Yep, this does not change much, but you can see there's like a slight difference right here. Alright, so I think for now this looks good. There's still some shadows that bother me around here. I might uh, use the key light and maybe put it up a little bit. But the issue is it kind of breaks the purpose of the, the original purpose of the light itself. As you can see, I could also disable shadows, but that would not really... That's not really what I want. You see, lighting is all about tweaking, tinkering around, and until you you find you know a pretty uh, a good spot for each of your lights. All right, I think yeah, I think that's better because uh, I would not be able to disable lights on the key light, uh, shadows sorry on the key light. The field light looks good, I think. All right, 
so we've got two lights out of three now. The last light I'm going to show you is not, I would say, necessary, but it's better to have one. It's what we call the rim light. And I don't give it any other name. That's literally what it's called, the rim light. Um, you may be wondering what, what that means exactly. What I'm going to show you right now, the rim light is placed uh, behind your character. Usually, you need to disable shadows for rim lights because they're, they're, they're actually going to look better without shadows and it's going to save performance. And as you can see, they are more visible when you disable shadows. I don't know if you just saw the difference. And so the purpose of, the, of a rim light is that, as you can tell, it will actually outline your characters like so. They're actually very hard to pose. Yep, they are very hard to pose because, as you can see, they, they can easily splash onto other models, which is not really what we want. Or we have to limit that, at least. And models often have very weird reflections, such as around here, around the eyes, or around the hair. So, to fix that, we're gonna have to either lower the intensity. Uh, when it comes to the rim light, remember the intensity has to be quite high, usually. You can lower it a little bit, but... Yeah, you, as you can see, it looks different. And you have to play, you have to pan around your character like this. Like a frying pan. That's extremely funny. That's absolutely hilarious. Until you get a result that looks good, actually. Yep, I think around here, yeah, yes, around here looks good. Perfect. Uh, you don't need to color rim lights, but you can sometimes, depending on the context. It depends on how you want to... I want to do it. I usually color... If I do color rim lights, I usually do it depending on my character's uh, colors. So in my case, I'm lighting up a an orange character, so... I will actually... use Try to use some orange by just playing around with the values. And as you can tell, whenever you put a color to, to a rim light, uh, it's, it feels like it's a little bit less bright than it was just before, so you can always, you know, play with the intensity once again. Like so, yeah. You can also just leave it to a white light. It just depends on how you want to, to do it. And sometimes you can also use a different color than the character itself to have like some kind of uh, two-colored uh, poster, two-colored theme, if you wish. But I just like to keep it simple, so I just keep this color instead. Because I want to highlight this character, not anything else. All right, you don't need to play with these two values because this light does not have shadows. You can sometimes have to play with this one. As you can see, depending on how, on depending on the value you, you put, the light will uh, not go as far as it would by default. But if you put it to the maximum, it's just gonna go very far away. And that's pretty much it for this uh, character. Okay, maybe the room light is a little bit too bright. Let's lower that down a little bit. Our fill light was good, maybe. You can try to pan it around. Your fill light should not act, act as a, as a, a, a um, sorry, a key light. Just remember that. So you have to make sure it does not light up too much. And our key light here, as you can tell, is brighter than the the fill light, which is good, which is what we want actually. All right, so I think we are done with this character. I hope you understood what uh, how three point lighting works. When it comes to the, these other two characters, uh, I do not know how I will light, light them up, to be honest with you. Um, but as a matter of fact, it does not matter that much, because my point uh, by this poster, I mostly wanted to highlight this character, not the others. I'm just going to play around and light them up as I want. But once again, three-point lighting is your friend. What I mean by that is that you should almost always uh, use this this technique when you light up your characters or your posters because you see by the first of all you have to, to place a key light even when it's not adjusted you can you can kind of see where we're going you know all right well let's lower the intensity let's make sure that this character is less bright than the one on the middle in the middle because i don't want to insist too much on this one shadow attenuation filter size 0.03 remember that but you can of course play with these values and find a, a value that you like. Enable volumetrics. Also remember that SFM has a shadowed light limit. 
Which is why I also told you to remove shadows on this one, on the rim light. Because it's gonna... You're gonna hit the limit much later. If you remember to disable shadows on some lights. I'm gonna put approximately the same colors, but I will actually be a little bit uh, closer to white. Mr. White. Jesse! Always, always rename your lights because when you end up in a scene where you have like, you've got like 20 lights and they're all named light 1, light 2, light 3, light 3, light 4, it's gonna be so annoying for you to remember which is which. So always re rename your lights, even when there's like only one or two, it's always, always useful. Because at least as soon as you open this session, you know just by looking at the name of the light what it does, right? Also, you should play with the FOV of the lights to, uh, how can I phrase that, decide how wide your light should be depending on what you want to emphasize. Say for instance, right here, I'm only focusing on the head of the character, but if I turn off the FOV, you see I'm also focusing right now on the violin and on his hands right here. But if I turn down the FOV by scrolling down, you see I'm only focusing on his face now. So play with FOV. Alternatively, you can also uh, uh, place your lights a little bit further or closer. Depends depend on how you want to, to do it. Just remember that the closer you get to, to your character, the brighter they will look. And then another, sorry, another fill light. Come on. Or actually, you know what? You can always copy an existing light, paste it, rename it. And pretty much work with it. You should not be afraid of, you know, always reusing your your lights. It's going to save you a lot of time. All right. So once again, let me illustrate what the fill light does. Yep, this is looking good. See, this this is where the the key light acts. This is where the fill light acts. But without the fill light, this is what it would look like. You see, it's completely dark on the other side, and we don't want that. We want our entire character to be lit up. And just for this character, we'll probably not use a rim light because rim lights are really used to, to put emphasis on your character. And I don't want to emphasize on this one because it's, it's going to be blurry anyway. And then last two lights, we're going to light up this character. But I will probably speed this up because you, I think you, 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 got, you got pretty much got how it works. Alright, so we are pretty much done with the character lighting for now. So always remember that um, three-point lighting is the way to go when it comes to, to lighting up characters. When it comes to ambient lighting, I am going to talk about it in a, in a moment. It's going to be different. Uh, three-point lighting uh, is not just used in CGI, it's also used in uh, photography for instance and traditional traditional art, digital art, etc. Though, of course, if you have any suggestions on how to improve this lighting, I am always uh, all ears. But I am personally satisfied with it, so all that's left now for me is to add some ambient lighting. So ambient lighting is going to be much faster. There isn't really any... There aren't really any tips I can give you for ambient lighting. Uh, just play around with your lights, play with some settings and see see what they do. It's usually that's usually how I do it. Let's do this instead. Always have this viewport uh, showing the entire scene. Right, so this light is way too intense either way. So let's turn it down to 0.01. And let's once again put some rather warm ambience to the poster. You can use volumetric lights once again. When it comes to ambient lights, you can pretty much turn noise strength to the maximum. Then let's turn this down. Once again, 0.03, remember that. And yeah, I think this light looks looks good. There's a little bit too much of reflection up here. I don't really know how to fix it, to be honest with you. Aside from just moving the, the light away. But 
that's not really what I want to do, so <laughs> I don't really know how to fix that. Make sure that your lights are not clipping too much, because when you've got uh, lights that are clipping, you will end up with some very weird results, as you can probably imagine. Um, I just move my light a little bit further. I cannot change the FOV. I've already reached the maximum. So what I'm going to do is move to the graph editor, which is right here on the timeline. I'm going to select these two horizontal and vertical FOV. Place a keyframe by pressing M. Select the keyframe and you can input any value that you'd like. Why would I use the graph? That's simply because I can change these two values at once and you cannot go over one if you're in the motion editor right here. Right, so let's put 1.1. Be very careful with these values because the higher you go, the funkier the light may, may look. I will not light up uh, these lights. I mean, I will not make these lights cast any light, <laughs> if, you got, if you got what I mean. I think this looks good. Alright, so the last light I wanted to talk about, the last type of light you could say, is what I call an, an emphasis light. Um, it's pretty much one of the very last lights I add when I realize that my scene does not... Uh, basically, when there are some elements in the scene that are not highlighted enough, I just use some extra emphasis light. And it's always, you know, nice to know which emphasis light it is. So I will call this one Rose Emphasis Light. It's obviously way too bright right now. Let's lower it down to a very, very, very low value, like so. And I'm going to put it down there on the Rose. Because I had noticed it was not bright enough. You can always disable shadows for emphasis lights, honestly. They're not very, very helpful. And that's pretty much it. It did not add much, but I feel like it at least, you know, added a little bit of a... It highlighted the, the rose a little bit. Alright. Well, to be honest with you, I think we are done. I think this poster is properly lit up right now. So let's switch back to the to the clip editor and let's let's see what it looks like. Right, so as you can see we are getting a little preview of uh, the poster right now in the in the clip editor. Remember whenever you're making a poster, your render settings by right clicking on the viewport should always be depth of field 1024. No matter, no matter how how old your, your machine is or, or how powerful it is, always put it to the maximum. And, and when it comes to motion blur, that's very context sensitive. When it comes to posters, uh, you should uh, you should disable it. It's not very it's not helpful in our case. But if you're working with animations, that's another topic. You can actually enable it, but we'll talk about that later. So yeah, these settings are fine for rendering. I uh, will not make a rendering tutorial, I will simply stop here. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if, you, if you've got any questions or if you've got any tips on how to improve uh, this tutorial, because this is one of my first times uh, making a tutorial. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you for listening and have a nice day slash evening slash night. Bye bye!